Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Virtual City Microentrepreneurship Awards. My name is Theodora Haji Michael, and I'm the Chief Executive of Responsible Finance. Each year, we look forward to celebrating the responsible finance sector through these awards. This is actually the seventh year we're holding the City Awards, and it's probably one of the most unique years. We've been hugely impressed by the responsible finance providers working tirelessly throughout the COVID-19 crisis to support their customers. This evening is for you. We set this up as a virtual happy hour event. So if you do have a drink in hand, let's say a big cheers to the sector. I do have a drink, but it's hidden by the green screen. So thank you to all the responsible finance providers who submitted applications to the 2020 awards. We received so many excellent applications and were blown away by the impact of the sector and the businesses you supported. I also want to say thank you to our independent judging panel, Bob Annabelle, Amal Gomersal, and Kyla Genetis from City Foundation, Vicki Belts from the Enterprise Research Center, James Pickford from the Financial Times, and former City Award winner, Mona Shaw from Harry Specters. Finally, we wanted to thank the City Foundation for their generous support of these awards and for their flexibility this year, given the circumstances. This evening, we'll have four Micro Entrepreneur Awards, then we'll have two CDFI Awards and two Personal Achievement Awards. We're really happy that this year all Micro Entrepreneur and CDFI finalists will be receiving a prize. We're so pleased that so many people within the sector have joined us tonight. It looks like we have almost 100 people on the call right now. I hope everyone enjoys this happy hour. If you are tweeting as we run through the awards, please use the hashtag CityAwards2020. So let's get started. Here's a short film about the sector. Responsible finance providers make affordable loans to businesses, social enterprises, and individuals. They are community development finance institutions, and they have championed entrepreneurship across the UK for over 20 years. Responsible finance providers are social enterprises, not banks. They reinvest surpluses to serve their communities better. In 2019, responsible finance providers lent £171 million to thousands of creditworthy businesses and social enterprises. More than 9 out of 10 of the businesses which responsible finance providers lent to last year had previously been turned down by banks. In 2019, 14,000 jobs were created and protected in businesses and social enterprises thanks to responsible finance providers. The average size of a responsible finance loan to an existing small business is £45,000 over four years. Responsible finance providers are experts at assessing risks in businesses that banks have said no to and then helping them thrive. They make a huge human impact, creating jobs in communities which are underserved by mainstream providers. In 2019, 15% of responsible finance business loans were to black, Asian, and minority ethnic-led businesses. And more than four in 10 of our business loans were made to women-led businesses. During the 2008 financial crisis, responsible finance providers stepped in to protect jobs and strengthen communities where banks had withdrawn credit from small businesses. And despite their limited capital base, they have stepped up to support SMEs through the COVID-19 crisis, increasing lending by 250%. Without their support, many small, micro and independent businesses will close, costing thousands of jobs and causing devastation across towns, cities and communities. Mainstream lenders may retreat from the small business market without incentives. SMEs and micro enterprises will be crucial to the UK's recovery from the COVID-19 crisis. Hardly any lenders can support the businesses which responsible finance providers support. But responsible finance providers themselves need access to capital to scale up their lending and support and inclusive economic recovery. 
a new 100 million pound responsible finance fund could reach 3,000 businesses and support over 13,000 jobs. Responsible finance providers are the only lenders who target businesses and social enterprises which fall through the cracks between mainstream lenders. And they play a critical role in businesses surviving prosperity. Responsible finance providers are a lifeline for small and micro businesses that cannot access mainstream lending. They tackle inequality and they promote inclusive growth. Welcome to the City Micro Entrepreneurship Awards. I'm Amel Gromsel, the Vice President of Community Development in Europe, Middle East and Africa at City. Thank you all for being here this evening and congratulations to all of this evening's nominees. We are pleased once again to be collaborating with Responsible Finance on these awards, which have shone a light on small enterprises and the responsible finance sector in the UK. The City Micro Entrepreneurship Awards, or the CMAs as I like to call them, because it does roll off the tongue a little bit easier than micro entrepreneurship, I held across the world from Uganda to Morocco, the Philippines and Poland, and are the seminal industry event of the year. This is in fact the seventh year we've held these awards in the UK, and many of you in the responsible finance sector have been to previous award ceremonies. We even have a returning entrepreneur nominee this year, so maybe this is your year. This year is a bit different from the last seven years, and not just because we're meeting virtually. The global COVID-19 pandemic has taken its toll on both human life and livelihoods around the world. And it's all too clear that small business owners have truly felt the adverse effects of the UK lockdown as we try to shield the most vulnerable in society. In many ways, now more than ever, we need the entrepreneurial mindset and skills of small business owners to help restart the economy, provide access to goods and services to their communities and create jobs. We also need the knowledge and expertise of the responsible finance sector to bolster entrepreneurs and households across the UK. We hope in a small way that these awards this evening can contribute to the resiliency of the responsible finance sector and raise awareness of the crucial work that you're all doing on the front line, not only in access to appropriate and affordable finance, but the crucial business support you provide. We also hope it demonstrates the importance of small enterprise in the UK as the lifeblood of our communities. Many previous winners and finalists have gone from strength to strength levering extensive publicity, partnerships and new business as a result of making it to the final and I'm super excited to hear from some later. Every year I help with the shortlisting along with the City Head of Inclusive Finance and Community Development, Bob Enible, and every year I'm impressed with how many high quality applications we have and how truly difficult it is to judge them all. So thank you to everyone who's taken the time to submit an application. Every single finalist whether micro-entrepreneur, responsible finance provider, or sector leader deserves the recognition for the work they do. Right, enough from me, because no one wants to hear the funder rattle on. So good luck to everyone, and let's kick off the awards. Congratulations to all this year's finalists in the City Awards. Just having the recognition for your endeavours is an achievement in itself. Since winning the Growth Award last year, we've really used it to our advantage using the prestige on our website and social media posts to add confidence to new and prospective customers. I wish you all the best. Good luck. The first award category is the Micro Entrepreneur Award for Sustainability. This award recognizes entrepreneurs who have created small scale and livelihood businesses with a positive impact on the environment. We have two finalists. First up, is Bruin Bake. Bruin Bake is a Preston cafe with a focus on using sustainable local produce from the Northwest. They started up with a 10,000 pound startup loan from Lancashire Community Finance. They get five star reviews on TripAdvisor and Facebook and have grown to employ six people. They moved into bigger premises last year, tripling the number of tables in an area that was dominated by fast food. Their customers love this cafe with an environmental conscience. Second is the refillery. The refillery is an Edinburgh based plastic free and zero waste store. It opened at the start of 2019 and has been a community hub and revitalized its local area. In the first year, it created five jobs and saved over 120,000 pieces of plastic packaging from being used. The founder Kelly 
used her savings to meet half of the startup costs of the business with the remainder being covered by a loan from DSL Business Finance. Now let's hear a short video from each of the finalists. I'm Julie from Broom Bake. I would just like to say how pleased I am to be nominated for this amazing award. I'd like to thank Lancashire Community Finance for nominating me and for all the help and support over the last two years. The prize money would go towards my outdoor seating and alcohol licence. Good luck to all the finalists. Hi, I'm Kelly from The Refillery. Delighted to be nominated for this award by DSL. DSL have been an amazing support for the last 18 months. We're on a mission to help people reduce their plastic consumption and anything mm -hmm. that we win today will be invested right back into new equipment for the shop to help more people shop plastic free. And the winner is... Congratulations to the refillery. The next award is the Micro Entrepreneur Award for Growth. This award recognizes successful entrepreneurs who have created businesses demonstrating strong growth. We have two finalists for this award. First up is Limitless Travel. Limitless is a global travel firm launched to make the world more accessible to disabled travelers. It was launched after its founder, Angus Drummond, was diagnosed with muscular dystrophy quit his job and traveled around the world. It was an amazing experience, but he discovered the difficulties of traveling with a disability. It, Limitless now employs 14 people and enables hundreds of people to travel in the UK and worldwide for the first time. Limitless was supported by an incubation program and seed investment from the Key Fund. The second finalist is Skills for STEM. Skills for STEM was launched in 2014 by Sarah Davis and they now have offices in the UK and the Republic of Ireland and employ 20 people. Skills for STEM focuses on skills within the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics sector, also known as STEM, and expertise in the construction industry and the built environment. They offer learning programs and technical qualifications. After the first three successful years of trading, a loan from ELEM's Midlands Engine Investment Fund turbocharged their growth. Now let's hear a short video from each of them. Hello everybody. I'm thrilled to be a finalist in the City Micro Entrepreneurship Awards. It's thanks to the amazing support of organizations like the Key Fund that we're in the position we're in now. If we were to win the award, we'd use the money to invest in our infrastructure and to ensure the post-coronavirus limitless is stronger than ever before. Thank you. Skills for STEM and I are so pleased to have been shortlisted for the Citibank Micro Entrepreneur Awards. Victoria and the team have been fantastic. If we win the awards, we're hoping to employ a brand new special projects officer to help us with research on future growth projects. And the winner for the award for growth is... Congratulations to Limitless Travel. Next up, we have the award for Social Micro Entrepreneur. This award recognizes the success of an outstanding social entrepreneur with a clear social or environmental mission. For this category, we have three finalists. First up is Raj Holness from Breaking the Silence. Breaking the Silence is an advisory support and training organization that supports women who are or have been victims of domestic abuse, human trafficking, and forced marriage. This charity and social enterprise has already supported over a thousand women and runs training workshops to give businesses the tools to recognize different forms of abuse. They'll soon move into their own refuge with the support of a mortgage from NatWest Social and Community Capital. Next up, we have Yasin El Shrafi from HQ Creative Arts Network. HQ is a recording studio and music education business in Leicester. When his son was born with a cord around his neck and diagnosed with cerebral palsy, Yassine wanted to look after him 
and decided to build his own business and set his own hours. Over the last eight years, HQ has offered free studio space to unemployed young people to explore their talents and they generate income through commercial studio hire and artist development services. A business loan and grant blend from the Key Fund helps set up an additional recording studio to double their capacity and secure a full-time general manager. And then finally, we have Rosie Gindi from Ma Miss Macaroon Group. Mm -hmm. Rosie trained as a high-end pastry chef and worked in a Michelin star restaurant before creating Miss Macaroon. Since opening its first retail store, Miss Macaroon has grown from producing 500 macaroons a day to 7,000. They reinvest all of their profits into training and employing long-term unemployed young people in retail and catering. A business loan from BCRS Business Loans with a match funding from Big Venture Challenge funded Miss Macaroon's expansion and supported the employment of four full-time staff. Now let's hear a few words from each of them. Raj Hall is here. Just wanted to say I'm so honoured and humbled to have been nominated, uh, let alone making it as a finalist. So thank you so much. And a huge thank you to NatWest Social and Community Capital, who have been so encouraging, so supportive. Massive thank you. And congratulations mm -hmm. to all the finalists. Hi, it's Yasin Alashraf here from HQ Can. I just want to give a massive, massive big up to Keith and for all the support they gave us access and our social investment package. So big thanks for the judges for putting me through to the final. It's really exciting and I really hope we win so that we can use that money towards a new entrance and sorting out a few bits of the studio. Hi, my name's Rosie Gindo and I'm the founder of Miss Macaroon. I'm really happy to be one of the finalists in the City Micro Entrepreneurship Awards. Delighted to be uh, nominated by BCRS who have been absolutely fantastic in supporting us, getting our loan to set up Miss Macaroon Retail, helping us to get long-term unemployed young people back into the world of work. And the winner of the Social Micro Entrepreneur Award is... Congratulations to HQ Recording. The final Micro Entrepreneur category we have today is the Young Micro Entrepreneur Award. This award recognizes the success of an outstanding young entrepreneur between the ages of 18 and 30. We have three finalists. First up, we have Edward Boot of Nonsuch Studio. A Nottingham theater, venue, and workspace, Nonsuch was launched in 2013 when Edward was just 20. Nonsuch now employs six people and generates audiences of 50,000 plus every year. They generate income by renting office space, performance and rehearsal spaces, running a popular cafe, and through a membership scheme. Nonsuch outgrew its first space, so investment from Key Fund allowed relocation to a 9,000 square foot property. Next up, we have Louis Spite from Omnis Circunvado. Omnis Circunvado is a specialist sports coaching company which gives inclusive opportunities to people who have complex needs. Louis, who is 29, was born with cerebral palsy and often told that he couldn't do things in his childhood, but he became a European record-breaking Paralympian wheelchair racer who's ranked number one in the world. Omnis Circumvado works with young children, young people, and adults in school and community settings. The key fund provided a business loan and grants package to support Omnis Circumvado's development. And then finally, we have Xander McGregor and Alan Nairn from Wester Spirit. Xander and Alan both enjoyed rum and wondered why it wasn't being produced in Scotland. They launched Wester Spirit in 2017 and soon after opened Glasgow's first rum distillery for 300 years, a zero waste to landfill business. Their products are stocked in over 300 establishments and their spiced rum is named in one of the top spiced, top 10 spiced rums in the world by The Independent. A loan from DSL Business, Fi business Finance supported Wester's growth. Let's hear a short video from each of them. Hi everyone, thank you so much for nominating us at Nonsuch Studios for a City Award and for us to have won something already before the award ceremonies even started. It's kind of putting a really kind of positive spin on the whirlwind of a time that we're having at the moment. 
thanks to all the support that we've had from the key fund over the last couple of months and we're looking forward to kind of investing what we've won already and hopefully what we might win a little bit more of um, in kind of enabling us to reopen as kind of Nottingham's newest and kind of most independent creative space for artists, audiences and communities. Hi, I'd like to say thank you to uh, Key Fund Finance for nominating me for uh, Young Social Entrepreneur of the Year. It's a great honour. Uh, thank you to the judges at Citibank for putting me through to the, the, the final three. Still can't believe it. Thanks very much. Hi guys, this is Xander from Wester Distillery. We're delighted to be part of the City Micro Entrepreneurship Awards. Big thanks to DSL Finance for their help and support over the last few months, uh, especially during this time. Um, we're hopefully going to invest the prize money in improving efficiencies in the distillery. And the winner of the Young Micro Entrepreneur Award is... Congratulations to Xander and Alan at Wester Spirit and to all the Micro Entrepreneur winners and finalists. We'll now move on to the CDFI categories. First up, we've got the Resilience Award, and this award recognises a successful, responsible finance provider which has shown resilience and consistency in its delivery of access to finance, especially to groups that often struggle to access finance, such as women and people from black and minority ethnic backgrounds. It celebrates organisations which have shown determination in overcoming difficulties, have delivered on their targets in changing or challenging market conditions, or which have adapted to survive or to grow, but stayed focused on their mission. There are five finalists. DSL Business Finance was established in 1993 to create jobs and enterprise in Glasgow, and it now operates throughout Scotland. Between 2000 and 2019, DSL provided over £20 million through over 1,600 loans in some of the most disadvantaged communities of Scotland, and nearly 45% of these loans were to women-led businesses. From 2016 to 19, DSL grew from four to 10 employees and achieved financial sustainability and profitability without any grant funding. Enterprise Loans East Midlands, first enterprise, started life as a project to help inner city black minority and ethnic communities following the Nottingham riots and this remains a core value. Over 35% of its clients are from a BAME background and 45% of its lending goes to female entrepreneurs. It's lent over £26 million in its 31 years during which over 10,000 individuals have been supported, over 3,000 new businesses started and more than 1,800 jobs created. Fair Finance launched in 2005 to provide finance to individuals and businesses, plus money and debt advice. It's grown from London to covering the country. Fair Finance has advanced 30 million pounds to people excluded from mainstream finance and helped over 89,000 people with finance and advice. It rebalanced its business in 2018 to focus its resources on the area with the most impact, personal lending and advice, and to create a clear path to financial sustainability and resilience. And in 2019, its core business grew the number of people it served by 10%, increased its income by 15%, and all while maintaining a focus on women and the low income communities around the country that it serves. Key Fund has, since 1999, invested over £55 million, supporting more than 2,000 organisations, enabling or safeguarding over 3,400 jobs and creating over 500 new businesses. In 2015, Key Fund restructured and it emerged a stronger organisation. It's been vocal within the social investment market about the necessity for grant and loan blends and mixes and it's continued its commitment to its founding mission to invest modest sums of funding into small enterprises that have a big impact on individual lives. 
Purple Shoots has been providing access to finance since 2013, tackling poverty and unemployment in Wales and in southwest England by enabling entrepreneurship and self-reliance. 96% of its clients are on benefits when they receive a loan, and it's made over 560 loans, starting over 500 small businesses, creating well over 500 jobs, and taking 500 plus clients out of employment. And the resilience runner-up is Purple Shoots. And the winner is Congratulations to Fair Finance and Purple Shoots. Next up is the CDFI Impact Award. This award recognises a successful responsible finance provider which has effectively demonstrated, communicated and improved its impact. It considers economic, environmental and social impact and there are five finalists. Finance for Enterprise was relaunched in 2009 and since then it's invested over £50 million across over 2,000 businesses. During this time, it's increased its reach from its base in Doncaster to now supporting businesses across South Yorkshire, Derbyshire, Nottinghamshire, Lincolnshire, East Yorkshire and the Humber. And to maximise impact, Finance for Enterprise particularly seeks to support growth businesses to drive GVA and to fuel financial trickle down in supply chains in the local economies. Five Lamps provides services to over 25,000 socially and financially excluded individuals. A wide range of services, including support for long-term unemployed people, youth clubs, enterprise coaching, finance, free, break free breakfasts in school holidays, a domiciliary care service, and affordable personal loans to individuals and homeowners who are unable to access mainstream financial support. Its impact measurement helps Five Lamps, Five Lamps to identify areas where service users may need additional support. Key Fund describes itself as primarily an anti-poverty organisation. It invests in all sectors across the North and Midlands, transforming lives and targeting disadvantaged groups. It previously collated figures around job creation but two years ago decided to do something different to check its social impact and to understand how that impact occurred and how it could even be improved. So it created a new social impact matrix to drill deeper into the beneficiary impact that its investments have. That's helping its clients to articulate their impact to key fund and other funders and it's helped improve decision making and even helped to secure funding for key fund. Scott Cash has saved low-income households over £6 million in interest payments, helped over 3,000 customers to open savings or bank accounts, and assisted thousands of people with money and debt advice. Impact measurement at Stock Scott Cash has led to it launching an online money MOT and benefit checking service. These have helped thousands of people to take control of their finances. And Scott Cash expanded across the UK in 2018 to 19 increasing the number of affordable loans and its turnover both by around 40 percent and reducing its overall cost of delivering a loan by over a third. Social Investment Scotland has a mission to connect capital with communities to make a real measurable and sustainable impact on people's lives. Over 1.1 million people have benefited from Social Investment Scotland's activities and its customers' activities in the last financial year, with 40% of those people living in poverty. It's taken a comprehensive approach to social impact measurement and, and its reporting too for many years, which has built trust and secured funding from the likes of Big Society Capital, the South of Scotland Economic Partnership, Highlands and Islands Enterprise and Finance for Enterprise. And the runner up of the Impact Award is the Key Fund. The winner of the Impact Award. <laughs> Congratulations. 
congratulations Social Investment Scotland and Key Fund. We'll now move on to the Outstanding Loan Officer of the Year Award, for which we have five finalists. And this award champions the efforts of an outstanding individual who delivers loans to people, to businesses or social enterprises and it celebrates the work of a responsible finance team member in a community development finance institution who's provided invaluable help and support to clients. The finalists for Outstanding Loan Officer are Izuka Nabundo from Fair Finance, Linda Baines from Lancashire Community Finance, Massey Wright from Enterprise Loans East Midlands, Nicola Cosgrove from DSL Business Finance, and Tim Daniels from Finance for Enterprise. And the Outstanding Loan Officer of the Year is Linda Baines from Lancashire Community Finance. Linda has excellent communication skills and she goes above and beyond to help LCF's customers secure additional income or find ways to make additional savings so their income can go further. This has had a profound effect and impact on those customers, reducing their stress and securing work. Congratulations, Linda. The final award for the evening is the Rising Star. The Responsible Finance Rising Star champions the efforts of an individual to improve access to finance and support the responsible finance industry. We have five finalists. First is Adam Wadey, Lancashire Community Finance. Audrey Lawrence from Fair Finance. Jessica Jackson from GC Business Finance. Steve Deakin from BCRS Business Loans. And Victoria Copestake from Enterprise Loans East Midlands. We're so thrilled to have so many amazing people working within the responsible finance sector who are dedicated to growing the impact of the sector on communities across the country. This evening, we'd like to recognize Jessica Jackson as the Responsible Finance Rising Star. Jessica has worked hard to address the gender balance through advocating for women in business and mentoring women entrepreneurs. Jess has played a huge part in increasing the visibility of equity investment in the responsible finance space across SMEs and more importantly across female founded and mixed founded businesses in Manchester and the Northwest. GC Business Finance's inquiries from women founders have increased significantly since Jess has been in post. Due to her outreach, 64% of the capital raised by her team will, be invest, will have been invested into women owned or mixed founded teams, whereas the wider industry average is only 11%. Congratulations to Jess and it's fantastic to see the work done to address imbalances in access to finance and enable the sector to offer greater access to opportunity. So well done to all the winners and finalists tonight. We're truly impressed by the work you do and we enjoyed showcasing your achievements this evening. Being involved in the City Micro Entrepreneurship Awards is a milestone for many businesses and we would like to play two final videos from a previous award winner and a finalist about the impact that the awards had on them. Thank you to everyone again for being involved tonight. I'd like to say a special thank you to Eleanor, Jamie Beach, Robin and Buchanan, who have all done a phenomenal job in organizing tonight's awards. And thank you again to Amal and the City Foundation team for their support this evening. Congratulations to all the finalists. We look forward to next time where we can hopefully be together in person. First of all, congratulations to you all. That's quite an achievement to get this far and it says a lot about you says a lot about who you are and where you've come from. My name's Andrew Thomas and uh, I'm the Managing Director of Better You Limited, uh, a nutritional supplement company, and I won the award in 2014. In fact, I think I was the first. Back then, we had a team of 13, 14 people. We were turning over two and a half million pounds a year. So um, today we're looking at an end of year result of 13 million 
Um, next year, we're looking at 16 to 17 million. Uh, we're launching into the US this year. Uh, we have a five-year plan of topping 40 million within the next five years. Uh, we employ 43 staff, so the future is looking pretty uh, impressive and, uh, and exciting. Being finalist means that you're going to do very well. So congratulations again. Enjoy today and uh, good luck for the future. Congratulations to all this year's finalists in the City Awards. Hypermotive were finalists last year in the Growth Award category. Although unfortunately we didn't bring home the award, we had a fantastic evening and made some very useful contacts in the finance sector and with other business owners. We were honoured by the award nomination. It gave us one of those rare opportunities to step back from our rapidly growing business and to reflect on what we'd achieved and on the opportunities we had ahead of us. Being recognised at national level was a great boost to our confidence and has helped us to continue to grow as a business. We just want to say thank you to everyone again. Take care. Bye.